Have a seat. Great. Thanks. And we're very pleased to have with us uh, the Deputy Executive Director of UN Women, Lakshmi Puri. And uh, as you know, International Women's Day uh, will be tomorrow, and we'll focus on women's economic empowerment in the changing world of work. And she's here to talk to you about that. Ms. Puri, the, the floor is yours. I sit here or go there? Whatever. Uh, no, no. It, yeah. You, the guests okay. always get to sit comfortably <laughs> as, they, as they make their presentation. Thank you, Bilan. Thank you for joining us. And as we get ready for the International Women's Day, tomorrow, uh, which, by the way, is uh, a signal that we must all commit to gender equality, women's empowerment, and women's human rights being realized on that particular day. But it's not to say that it is not a, a duty and a commitment to do so every day, every moment. So it is, in fact, the opposite, that it's a commitment uh, that everyone, all the stakeholders, the international community, uh, the member states, uh, the citizenry, the private sector, the civil society, everyone must commit to that. So it's, it's that day tomorrow. Also, the theme of this year's celebration is Women in the Changing World of Work, Planet 5050 by 2030. And this is also the priority theme of the Commission on the Status of Women, which starts on March 13 and runs for two weeks. And it gathers thousands of NGO, and this time we have had a record-breaking registration of 8,600 NGOs and individuals from NGOs. And of course, um, as of now, we, we also have a very high number of ministers and senior officials. Usually, altogether, uh, the government delegates uh, amount to more than 1,000. Now, uh, the theme, women's economic empowerment in the changing world of work, is about affirming the importance, first of all, of women's economic empowerment to achieve Agenda 2030 in all its dimensions. But also, it's about stating the connection between women's economic empowerment and women's right to productive work and full and productive employment and decent work. So in that, and also the conditions and her rights, a woman's rights and conditions of work. So it is in that context that this theme, which is the first ever theme, to be, uh, for the first time this theme is being taken up, is going to be an opportunity also to address the implementation and achievement of not only goal five, SDG five, on achieving gender equality and empowering all women and girls, and its six targets, of ending violence, ending harmful practices, of equal participation, voice in leadership and decision making in public, political, and economic life, valuing unpaid care work and redistributing and, and uh, provisioning it, um, universal access to sexual and reproductive health and reproductive rights, as well as uh, the the con context of um, the um, uh, all all the uh, women's economic empowerment as the means of achievement of these goals. So this is this is why it's very very important for the gender equality agenda. <clears throat> Equally, 
it is important for other SDGs like the one on poverty eradication, on hunger and food security. Uh, it's important for the health and educational goals and so many of the other goals. Um, now, if we look at the benefits, uh, there are studies which show that women's participation, equal participation, and, and the degree of that equality, if I may put it that way, uh, would uh, increase uh, exponentially uh, the GDP of countries uh, in, at the least by US 12 trillion dollars by 2025. It is estimated according to a study that has been done by McKinsey and UN Women was involved in that. And at the most, at, uh, it would be up to $28 trillion. And yet, progress is uneven and slow, which would require another 170 years says the women, uh, the World Economic Forum's latest gender gap report. Uh, so we clearly need to make a giant leap towards closing these gaps, whether it is the equal pay gap, which is 23% at the least. And uh, in some countries, it is even bigger. And in some sectors, it is even bigger. Uh, the income gap, one-tenth of the global income uh, women have. And they do two-thirds two of the world's work in terms of the hours that they spend. Uh, also, too many hours on unpaid care and domestic work, two and a half times more than men on a global average. Uh, and the disproportionate burden of that, which prevents them to, uh, from learning, and it's also the girls, women and girls, which prevents them from learning, from paid work, from sports or leisure, engagement in civic and community leadership, and political leadership and participation and determines where women and men are positioned in the economy, in society, and in governance. And tomorrow, we are uh, commemorating this, uh, both celebrating and drawing attention to this uh, issue uh, through a major event, which is uh, scheduled uh, uh, and in, in the United Nations, where a host of experts speaking on these issues will highlight both the gaps as well as ways to close those gaps. And uh, UN Women Goodwill Ambassador Anne Hathaway will also be joining us on this endeavor, fo focusing on the importance of providing paid parental leave that both mothers and fathers can enjoy. Uh, and uh, the other issue uh, that we are going to be strongly pushing for uh, through our very special events and initiatives is the global gender pay gap issue and uh, launching a coalition on a platform of equal pay champions on Monday the 13th. And uh, we will kick off a campaign on this issue. Also, for this, actress Patricia Arquette and retired soccer player and Olympic medalist Abby Wamba Amadas will join us at 6.30 in the General Assembly Hall, and you're, of course, invited too. And there will be some heads of state and, and uh, member states who will be championing on this, as well as celebrities and uh, labor unions and other leaders. On 14th, the Commission on the Status of Women. This is something uh, very important, too, on the status of women. will interrupt its work for five minutes. And it will be done at 4.10 PM, when 77% of its work day has passed. 
to recognize the fact that women only receive 77 cents every dollar a man earns on global average. Other emerging and growing areas such as care and green economies, as well as the fast digital advances that can offer new opportunities or pose threats to uh, women uh, and their access to decent work and full and productive employment will also be uh, addressed as part of analyzing the changing world of work, because these are the factors in formality, mobility, and uh, technology are the three change makers in the world of work. But changing the world of work is also about making it more inclusive of women's voice, participation, and leadership. So that's, that's the significance of this. We will also be very much looking at political will and concrete measures. What can governments do? What can public sector do to create the enabling environment? But also we will be looking at what should be done on the demand side to prepare and foster the, and incubate the, um, the capacity of girls and women to participate in labor markets more effectively and in different sectors more effectively. <coughs> how can we get out of the sticky floors? Uh, how, we, how we can deal with broken ladders and leaking pipelines? and glass ceilings and glass walls. So all of that will be addressed. Uh, and the issues of recruitment, retention, and promotion that need to be tackled by employers across women's entrepreneurship, self-help groups, organizations, including their participation in the labor movement, are also issues that need to be addressed and will be addressed. Um, one of the uh, aspects that we will be looking at also are uh, increasing uh, women's participation uh, and women's economic empowerment and participation in the workforce uh, through uh, procurement policies, both government procurement and private sector procurement policies. So these are some of the many ideas, and I'm happy to respond to your questions on these. But also to flag to you another important uh, initiative, uh, the UN Secretary General's High Level Panel on Women's Economic Empowerment, uh, of which the UN Women Executive Director is a, is a member. And in the final report that will be unveiled on March 14, we will be putting the, the, the panel will be putting forward recommendations on how to advance progress on this critical issue following a bottom-up approach and um, addressing all the key gaps and how to fill them and how transformative initiatives and, and, and actions as well as investment in the women's economic empowerment agenda can be taken. So these are some of the key areas. I also want to highlight that there will be a very, very powerful youth uh, forum uh, in the CSW, uh, organized from on 11th and 12th. Uh, and with the focus on investing in young women and their organization and, the, and supporting their economic empowerment and participation uh, in the workforce uh, and, in the, in, and, and their uh, pathway and, and enabling their pathway to decent work and full and productive employment in the changing world of work. It will also be about engaging young men and their organizations, and the intergenerational dialogue and partnership towards that end. Um, the indigenous women's rights 
and, and their context is one of the important emerging themes and focus areas that would also be addressed as part of the Commission on Status of Women. And um, UN Women as uh, the file holder on, on this theme as part of the larger indigenous people's agenda and their rights agenda, we will be, of course, supporting uh, that discourse and, and progress and recommendations in that area.